So welcome everyone. My name is Attila Kanik. I'm from the Budapest University of Technology and I'm a maintainer of the Hyper Agile Caliper project along with Nick Lincoln and many other community contributors. In the next few minutes, I will give a brief introduction about what Hyper Agile Caliper is and how we can use it to performance test uh, uh, our uh, distributed backend solutions. So let's start with the essential question, what is Caliper? Caliper is a distributed, scalable, and extendable tool. Its purpose is to generate user-defined workload and requests, and these workloads will target a variety of uh, system under tests as uh, or backend systems for short. Caliper will measure the request response times for each item in the workload, and finally, is uh, reported to the user in an aggregated format. So this is the gist of Caliper, generating workloads, measuring response times and uh, reporting it to the users. Uh, on the other hand, Caliper is not a deployment tool, so uh, it does not manage or scale out or modify the uh, backend system in any way. It simply just measures, uh, measures its response time. Uh, also, Caliper is not a, a infrastructure monitoring solution, so for this you will have to use other uh, available uh, tooling supports, but we provide integration for uh, typical uh, solutions in this area, so it can also be included in the generated report. So Caliper is strictly for generating a workload towards an already uh, cal uh, calibrated and managed backend system. Uh, so uh, what does Caliper comprise of? Let's see the high-level components. We have a so-called uh, manager service, which will be interacting with the end user, and it will uh, generate the final report. This manager service uh, orchestrates a number of worker services and uh, aggregates their data at the end of a benchmark. The worker services are the backbone of uh, the scalability of Caliper. Uh, they can span multiple uh, host machines, for example, so it's the de facto way of uh, scaling out your workload generation if you need uh, high throughput uh, scenarios. And these worker services will actually generate the workload and interact with the backend system and measure its response times. So these are the two main components of Caliper, a manager and multiple worker components. But what do, what do we actually need to put together a benchmarking project? Uh, there are a few things. Uh, first, uh, Caliper will need a network configuration file. This file essentially just describe the, describes the connection detail of the backend system, how Caliper can, can connect to its individual nodes, for example. Also, uh, we'll need the benchmark configuration file. This will uh, describe the flow of our benchmark, for example, the rounds and their characteristics. And of course, the most important part is our custom workload implementation. Uh, the user has to provide this, and this will uh, essentially fill the uh, request with actual business logic content. So this is what makes Caliber usable for many scenarios. Uh, it handles the logistics, and you uh, smart it up with your own business logic. And of course, you will need Caliper to put this all together, and Caliper is available on NPM and uh, Docker Hub. So let's uh, see these points one by one. For example, you can see here uh, an example fabric network configuration file. Uh, probably should be familiar for fabric SDK users. This is essentially a common connection profile. Although we have some metadata for Caliper, some arbitrary information to include in the generated report, for example, the size or the distribution of our network. And we have identities that uh, Caliper can impersonate during when sending requests and some fabric specific channel information, particip participating organizations, and finally, the actual computing nodes in the network and where you can reach it. So it's a pretty straightforward definition of the backend system we want to test. Then there is the benchmark configuration file. First part of it is a test definition. We can uh, use multiple rounds to perform our test. Each round can have uh, separate responsibilities. For each round, we can run it either for a fixed uh, time duration or a fix, uh, for a fixed uh, transaction number. We can also uh, tune the sending rate 
of uh, caliper for each round. So this way we can achieve lower or higher throughputs. Uh, we provide a few uh, built-in rate control mechanisms, such as uh, fixed rate controllers or linearly increasing rates or the mixes of these. But you can also implement your own uh, rate controlling logic based on whatever criteria would like. It's a pluggable point in uh, Caliper. I already mentioned the workload modules, and uh, this is the part where you can specify which uh, of your implementation will actually fill the transactions with meaningful content. And at the end, uh, you can integrate Prometheus uh, into your uh, into your uh, generated report. Uh, you can define custom metrics uh, using Prometheus queries, and uh, you can chart the results in different uh, formats uh, in the final report. And now for the uh, crust of uh, Caliper, the workload modules. Uh, in contrast to the previous items, this is actually code that you have to write, not just a configuration. So you will have to implement a specific interface and this workload module will be called every time that when a Caliper schedules the next transaction, which means that when the rate controller says that, okay, it's time for the next transaction. And in this module, you just essentially uh, calculate the parameters of your next transaction, whatever criteria you want. You can see here that we um, basically choose uh, attributes for a new barbell in a round robin uh, fashion. Then you can assemble the uh, backend specific transaction request. Here you can see an example transaction for Fabric. And then you just handle it to Caliper to submit the actual transaction. It will, uh, it will follow up on the required protocol, um, whatever the backend desires. So everything else is hidden from you. It's still pretty simple, but we still have to write some code which can be error prone and less portable. So, but the good news is, that uh, there is an ongoing mentorship project that will address this exact issue. So we will try to uh, we will try to come up with a configuration schema that can sufficiently describe similar workloads you see in the uh, presentation. And we will also provide a built-in workload module for Caliper that will just parse your configuration and act accordingly. So if everything uh, goes right, then workload modules can also be written in configuration instead of uh, JavaScript or, or whatever uh, is currently supported or in the future by Caliper. So uh, this is an interesting uh, project currently, and, and it's really uh, fun to envision the, the possibilities. Uh, we don't have a lot of time to uh, go into the details, but uh, I included some references for further reading or the repository itself. Definitely check out the documentation. It has uh, uh, much more details regarding the components and the orchestration mechanism of Caliper. So uh, that would be a little too low, low level for this presentation. And uh, I think we now have uh, time for the uh, Q&A session. So if you have anything, anything to ask about uh, Caliper, then uh, head to the Q&A tab of the session and uh, write your questions. Some typical questions we get uh, in the repository is, can Caliper support, support this or that uh, backend? It could. So uh, Caliper is modular enough to mm, implement support for different uh, backend platforms. So all we have to do is, uh, or all you have to do is implement uh, some wrapper kind of adapter for your uh, platform uh, with the specific API, and uh, then you can plug it into Caliper. So currently there are a few uh, DLT platform uh, supported, but this list uh, hopefully will be extended in the future and not necessarily for just DLTs. Another uh, useful remark, as I mentioned that Caliper is available on Docker Hub, so uh, you can just drop it as a container, a containerized service into your already existing uh, environment, for example, Kubernetes or Docker Swarm, and uh, scale out the workers with a simple setting, and uh, you can really overload your system. 
Do you have uh, an example of the published reports? I remember at some point Caliper was publishing a GitHub pages site that had ones that had been run, or does that still exist or no? Uh, yes and no. So that's not directly generated by uh, Caliper. That's uh, specifically for the uh, for the uh, Caliper benchmarks uh, repository. Mm. You can see some. Uh, mm, let's say some systematic micro benchmarks for uh, the fabric uh, chain code apis uh, written by nick lincoln and uh, the results were published as a github page from this caliper benchmark repository so you can uh, reach it from the benchmark repo cool mm, and for the other part uh, no i haven't included the recent report because there were some uh, edit features uh, not so long ago so uh, i had to assemble a whole new uh, campaign and Prometheus to demonstrate that. But in the documentation, you can see that we have new charting options and anything you can to uh, integrate Prometheus results through its query language. So cool. the possibilities are almost limitless. Thanks. Well, we have five more minutes if anyone would like to ask any questions. Or if not, I guess we can wrap up early. There we go. Yeah. What is next for Caliper? New features, etc. Uh, yes, that's a new. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, currently, the uh, focus of the maintainers uh, is to uh, clean up and and make the code base more robust. And one, it's a little bit technical for the first part, uh, but. Uh, once we do that, we can move to a more uh, more uh, well-defined uh, behavior for worker processes, for example. And then we plan to implement worker processes in other languages, not just uh, JavaScript. Because as you can see, for Fabric, uh, we have no JS SDK. But for example, for uh, Corda, we only have Java SDKs uh, at the moment that could be easily integrated. And for that, uh, for a really seamless uh, experience, we would need a Java Caliper worker. And it's a possibility. It's, it's, it's close, but not quite here yet. So this is, I think, the main, uh, main road we are trying to take to provide lightweight worker processing processes for many languages. So you can write your uh, workload module in your desired language, for example. And that's what motivated this uh, hyper agile mentorship project. That if you can write your uh, workload module as a configuration file, then it's easily portable to other Caliper worker process languages also. And there is a chat question Can anybody be part of a mentorship uh, program? Uh, yes, I think the eligibility criteria for this program were uh, quite relaxed compared to previous years. And uh, I think, yes, so that's a short answer. Uh, the Link Foundation has many mentorship uh, projects. I think it has a LFX mentorship platform for this, but uh, probably Rai could uh, answer this more. Sure. Um, we, we did, as you noted, uh, try to, to open up eligibility for the mentorship program to people who are uh, you know, not just students, but, you know, recent graduates or mid-career. Um, the current uh, tranche of uh, mentees and mentors have already been matched. Uh, so it's going to be another uh, year before mentorship programs open up. But um, yeah, uh, just keep an eye on our, our LFX platform. And um, we, you know, encourage everybody to apply. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and this What's next for Caliper question? Mark, did you have something specific in mind or uh, or just interested? There are a lot of ideas in our heads, uh, but of course we have limited time and resources. But uh, uh, if anyone has a specific uh, cool request, then uh, you can find us in uh, uh, Rocky Chat, uh, the Caliper channel, and drop any ideas on us. So. We are not afraid to take up a challenge. OK. Uh, with that, I think I'm going to close the session and yes. uh, give everybody 30 seconds to get to the next session. OK. Thank you for uh, Bye -bye. your attention. Bye.